Hello everyone! Today we'll take a look at a ukulele fingerstyle arrangement of Chimchimmery from Mary Poppins. It is a great short piece that has a ton of pedagogical value to practice few techniques relative to fingerstyle. So buckle up and let's get started. But before that, a few quick announcements. If you want to skip to a certain section, use the timestamps in the video. And I'll be referring to few concepts such as block chords, free stroke, position shifts. All these terms are terms that I use in my ukulele fingerstyle basics course, which will be released on March 1st. If you're interested, sign up to get a notification in the link in the video description. If you watched the lesson and feel like you really want the course right now, then sign up on my Patreon and get exclusive early access for 50% off just for the month of February. With that in mind, let's get started. Like any good fingerstyle student, we'll learn the melody on its own then we'll play it in context with the other voices, mainly the bass and the accompaniment. At the end, I'll give you a slow playthrough with a metronome. For the at tempo playthrough, just watch my arrangement in the end screen, video description, or the card above. Cheers. So the first thing to do before you play any fingerstyle arrangement is to be aware of where the melody is. And the best way to do that is to play the melody notes. If you look at most of my fingerstyle arrangements, you'll realize that the melody notes correspond to the music notation notes with the stems pointing up. This is the standard of melody notes. Bass notes are usually notes with the stems pointing down, and the accompaniment or the third voice are notes that are sandwiched in the middle, either pointing up or down. You start by playing the second fret on the third string with your second finger. Notice how I marked the second finger with a number to the left of the note, while the right hand finger is a letter on top of the note using letter I for index, M for middle, and A for your ring. So that's the second fret. And then you play a sequence of open A strings or open first strings, ring, middle, index. And then Notice how for the entire passage, I was holding my second finger. In bar seven, or the third bar of the melody, you play. That's a dotted rhythm. So that's one, two, three. One, two, three. Two. Notice how I used my fourth finger for all of those third frets because using my fourth finger on the third fret maintains my square left hand position and instead of tilting with my third finger we usually want to stay square and straight and we do that by using our fourth finger the end of the first melodic phrase that's a scale passage make sure you're alternating your right hand fingers middle index middle third fret Here's a chance for us to practice a legato tip. When you play the open to the first fret and then open, do not freeze at the second open. Most beginner students would play that open and then panic or scramble to get to the third fret. But in the course, I teach that this is a legato tip where you play the first fret, then you play the open, and when you play the open, you need to be moving to the note that comes next so that when it's time to hit it, you're already set up. So I'm going to play that scale passage slow. If you noticed, my fourth finger was able to go from the open to the third fret. Is this the same? All the same. So here again, you're using your fourth finger. Now you're gonna go to the fifth fret with your fourth finger. You're gonna stretch back because you're in the second position with your first finger on the second fret, second finger on the third fret, third finger on the fourth fret, fourth finger on the fifth fret. So that means the third fret's your second finger. But now you have to stretch back Now, notice how I added vibrato to make sure I accent that high melody note. 
Now I'm going to have to do a position shift in the same direction. This is the same direction position shift. I talk about the two types of position shifts in the course. So now you're in the fourth position, which means first fingers on the fourth, second on the fifth, third on the sixth, and fourth on the seventh. Another legato tip is that when you play this scale passage, you leave your fingers on the fretboard, or what I say, only move your fingers when you absolutely need to. Since I don't need to let go of my first finger, I keep it. Since I don't need to let go of my second finger, I keep it. And now I need to let go of my fourth finger. And that's the melody. Here's a quick playthrough. Make sure you practice the melody on its own, and once you feel you've got it, it's time to add the other voices in. Now we're going to add the other voices to play the complete arrangement. So the intro is four bars of two bars that just repeat. You start with your third finger on the seventh fret on the fourth string, and that's your bass note. You probably want to play your bass note with your thumb, and then the note that comes on the third string with your index. Because if you play the seventh fret and the fifth fret, with your thumb, they will sound like they're both a bass note, but they're not. The fifth fret is actually your third voice. So you don't need to overpower the fifth fret. And the way to do that is to play the bass note with our thumb and the other note with another finger. So the first bar is third finger on the third fret, first finger on the fifth fret. And that's just applying free stroke right hand technique to play those alternating strings. I talk about free stroke in the chorus. Now I let go of my third finger and I play seventh fret and sixth fret with my index and middle. Now look at my third finger is going to be a guiding finger to slide down or position shift to the fifth fret and fifth fret. Now I'm using my fourth finger and now I'm going to be using my third finger as a guide to move down and play 4th fret and 3rd fret. Putting the two bars together. Now, the advantage of playing the 4 and the 3 with your 3rd finger and 2nd finger is that when you go into bar 5, or the beginning of the verse, you can just move your 3rd finger to the 2nd fret and now you can play that D minor chord, right? Now the melody starts A major, that's thumb and ring. So the rhythm is, so one, two, and three, one, and two, and three. And now comes the most fun and difficult bar in the arrangement. Them here is difficult, but it's actually just one and two and three and one. One and two and three and. But the reason it sounds difficult is because the melody is going while all the other beats are being filled by the accompaniment. So you have to make sure that we are able to hear when you play this bar. So the way we're going to do that is by working on our left hand fingerings. So you have to make sure you don't mute the open A. Now you do a partial bar where you break the knuckle of your first finger to get the first two strings. And you do that because you need the third string to be open. Now the second fret on the third string cannot be with your second finger because you're holding the bass note. So you're left out with only your third finger. And you cannot let go of your second finger still, but you can let go of the first finger. Now you use your fourth finger. So the reason this bar is difficult is because you have to 
execute one move after the other in a specific order to make sure the whole thing rings throughout in legato. Now once you're here for that G minor chord, it's just your third finger that goes. You already have it with your fourth finger and second finger from bar eight. When you go to bar nine, it's just your third finger. You already have the fingers pressed. That's your fourth finger for the third fret. You use the open strings to move. That's a legato tip. Uh, again, mentioned in the course, you use the open notes to move. Notice how I'm playing the third fret and the fourth fret as if I am playing an A major chord, except instead of being on two and one, I'm playing four and three, and uh, my third finger will play the other four. Now I can slide these two fingers down to frets or position shift down to frets in the same direction. So that becomes Now for that chord, you can either strum it or play it as a block chord. And you guessed it, I talk about block chords in the course. I'm sorry for marketing this stuff to you guys, but anyways, you play the chord and then you play that scale passage we learned in the melody. Now when you play the verse again, you could either play it exactly as it was before or you could just add a small alternation. In my case, I just decided to strum them. So that's down, up, down, two and three, one, two and three. Make sure you don't overpower them and make sure that you understand when you strum these chords, the most important note is the A string because that's where the melody is. Da, 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 da. The A major comes. Now it's the same finger picking pattern as bar seven, which is the first um, iteration of this part. Same as before. Notice how when I play this, I do not let go of my third finger because that's my bass note. So this is different from when we played the melody. When we played the melody, it was one, one, three, one, zero, because that's the easier way to play the melody. But if we do that, then we're kind of stuck having to let go of the notes. It just becomes awkward to go from the D minor to the E to the A major. So what I did is, you play the D minor. Now you position shift up the neck in the same direction. You play third fret with your first finger, fifth, uh, fifth fret with your third finger. And now you can position shift back in the same direction to play that D minor, that A major chord, sorry. So that's D minor. Now once you play that A major, you have to partial bar to get the first fret, like that index knuckle. You can take that rest, and then, so that's the G chord. We don't know yet if it's major or minor because we're missing the third. Now you see a third fret, resist to play with your second finger. You actually need to shift your fourth finger in the same direction that way. The third fret, so. Now while you're here, you set up the G minor chord because now we have the third. And then notice how I'm using my third finger instead of the fourth, but that's because my fourth finger is busy playing that third fret. And I don't want to let go of it and play G minor that way because I want to make sure my note rings over in legato. Then I'm going to have to stretch and leap. Now here you have two beats to practice positioning this chord, which is basically an F major chord. It's a chord that we all know, except we're not playing it with our first and second finger. We're playing it with our third and second finger. And you're gonna be playing instead of the second fret and the first fret, you're playing sixth fret and fifth fret, and then you're barring the fourth fret. Now, once you're here, you use your first finger to shift up a fret. Now you're at the fifth fret. That's, these are the two fives. Now you have to do two 
natural harmonics. That's on the seventh fret on the first string, and I'm playing it towards the bridge to get that easier. And then with my thumb on the first string, uh, fourth string. But don't relax too much because you gotta keep going. And then you do the whole thing over again. So why don't we do a slow playthrough? Turn your metronome on. And let's see if we should do one, two, and three. One, two, and three. Got it. And then you just play the repeat exactly the same as the first iteration. Good luck. This is a fun piece with a lot of cool things that you could use to improve your finger style picking technique. If you've enjoyed this video lesson, hit the subscribe button and join me on Patreon for access to all my PDFs, tutorials, and live streams, or go ahead and check out that course. It has a lot of valuable content similar to this lesson. Until then, I'll see you next time.